Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here, and welcome to my video for Death's Door, where I'll be showing you all 16 of the shrine locations. Shrines are one of the most important things you can find in the game. They will raise your total amount of health and magic ability. This video is organized in chronological order of when you can unlock them as you are working your way through the game. Now the first one available is in the Lost Cemetery. Pretty much as soon as you get here and make some progress linking the ladders back to the main area, you can go down this bridge, down this elevator, and go back behind this building to a secret path. Drop down two times, go into the tunnel entrance, and find your first of 16 shrines. There will be eight health shrines and eight magic shrines. Health are obviously green, magic's obviously red. Grabbing four of any color will raise that stat by one up to two total times. So you can end up with six health and six magic by the end of the game. Now the next shrine is easily found once you reach the ceramic manor and you don't need any abilities for this one either. This is going to be right before you head into the building. I'm going to go right through this gate, but if yours is locked, all you have to do is work your way through the gate uh, by going to the left hand side and then defeating some enemies. You'll end up in this kind of courtyard in the back and there is a secret bush you can sneak through to sneak through another secret bush and end up behind the building to find yet another shrine. Every time you interact with a shrine, it'll give you some text that you can skip through, but it basically just lets you know how many more you need until your next upgrade. Additionally, grabbing all 16 will also grant you an achievement. You can find another shrine if you start at the Ceramic Manor, and you have to have the Flame Spell upgrade for this, so make sure you have the Fire before you try to get this. If you head back out the manor and go towards kind of the right of the screen where the extra weapon was, you'll see exactly where I'm going here on screen. You can cross a bridge, you'll have to fight a boss, and then the door will open. You'll get to an area where there will be four kind of pots, and you can light them all on fire by using the fire spell. Once you light all four of them up, it will open a secret door. Then you can just follow that secret door to a kind of bush. You can walk through the bush, drop down into the hole, and find your next shrine. We can find yet another shrine located close to the ceramic manor door. You will need the flame ability for this, I believe, in order to get far enough into the level. But go up the left hand staircase and then go through the first door here. If that door is not open, you may just need to make a little bit more progress in the game. You'll use the flame spell to open up all four of those pots to climb this ladder. Then once you climb the ladder, you can enter the hallway. Stick on the left hand side and enter the far door, you'll enter into this room with a bathtub. If you climb up the ladder and you look in the reflection of the floor, there's a pot you can smash up here, and there's also a, pat a pot you can smash on the ground right here. After you do that, it should open the door, which is basically just walking through the wall. This will show you a secret room with a secret shrine. The next shrine can be found once you reach the inner furnace. This is underneath the witch's manor and you'll get here as a part of the story as you work your way towards the witch boss. From here, just start running back towards the bottom right hand side, kind of from where we entered the area. Call the elevator and then ride it across the gap back to where we came from. We're now in the furnace observation room. What you'll need to do is use your arrow to call the cart on the right hand side and then hop on it and ride it across up the ladder and once you are up the ladder you should be able to now cross the gap using these pipes and on the other side of the gap is a very well hidden but not too hard to find health shrine.
The next shrine can be found in the next area of the game and it is called the Overgrown Ruins. Just work your way through this area until you get to the settlement of the forest people. Because I'm already there, I have all the shortcuts unlocked to get there more quickly from the door. But this is an area you will have to go in order to make progress through the game. So this is the forest people settlement. You'll have to talk to the main guy here. He'll ask you for a magic horn. But if you kind of backtrack a little bit to this side, you can drop down onto this ledge, which is otherwise inaccessible. And here you can find a shrine. This is a very obvious shrine you would have seen as you were navigating some of the bridges earlier on. And hopefully you could find this one on your own if you were just going through the game normally. There is another shrine available in the Overgrown Ruins. This time I'm starting from the settlement of the forest people and I have a bunch of the next areas unlocked via ladders and doors. So if you go up that closest door up the ladder and then through this kind of circular area and into the corner, you'll use a vine to snatch yourself up, then continue to follow along the path to the next area. We're kind of working towards the right of the screen and trying to go up as high as possible. You'll eventually reach a ladder and then another set of vines, and then you can basically roll off of the edge here and use your attack in order to do a ground pound. If you do a ground pound onto this circle, you'll end up in an underground tunnel, which you can follow to the other side, exit out the other side, and then all you need to do is go into the kind of tunnel entrance there, and past that, you'll find your next shrine. This one was pretty tricky in my opinion. Next up, we are in the Mushroom Dungeon. We will need the bomb ability in order to do this. And once you have the bomb ability, all of these shortcuts should also be unlocked for you. From the Mushroom Dungeon door, work your way across then drop down the ladder, come out the door, and we'll wanna go up the staircase right next to this to the top left of the screen. So go through that door. You are already in this area as a part of the story in order to release one of the souls that we needed to get the bomb ability in the first place. We're now just coming back with the bomb ability and working our way towards the top of the screen where there is a breakable wall. Use that ability to break on through, walk on through, and here you'll have to do a quick little mini game or puzzle, whatever you want to call it, where you'll have to light all three of the uh, fire pots basically at the same time as quickly as possible. This will open up the door and then you can work your way through and find the shrine on the other side. Now I'm gonna show you this one from the Mushroom Dungeon door. This is basically after I've done everything, unlocked the bomb ability, and I'm ready to move on to the next area, which is the Flooded Fortress. However, by the time you get to the Flooded Fortress, the door ends up being further. So we're gonna follow the signs to go to the Flooded Fortress. There's actually signs to let you know where the frog will be waiting for you, but you have to go here as a part of natural progression. You cannot miss it. If, you're compli if it's complicated and you don't know where you are, you'll have to just keep playing the game until you get here. Use your bomb ability to break on through this door and then you'll end up in the flooded fortress, as I said. Now, once you're here, we're just gonna be following the uh, wooden planks and there are some arrows we'll need to shoot at some objects in order to generate little platforms that we can walk on. This is kind of just teaching you a new mechanic in the game. But if you keep following these wooden uh, platforms, you'll eventually happen upon a wooden platform with two kind of metal gates that are right here on screen. And here you wanna to go to the top left. And there is an arrow you'll have to shoot across this large gap where you can barely see what you're shooting at. And if done correctly, it will spawn these platforms in front of you. And then all you have to do is walk forward and grab the shrine. This one was pretty tricky in my opinion.
Next up, we're returning to the Lost Cemetery, but we need the bomb ability for this, which is why we couldn't get it earlier. So head up the ladder kind of directly in front of you once you spawn. You'll have to obviously fast travel back, and then you can head up the ladder to your left, and you can go past the undiable enemy here that we have spoken to a couple of times probably. Up the ladder behind them, we're basically working towards the Stranded Sailor area. And this is an important area because you'll need to go here later on in the game anyways. But if you follow this path here, you'll eventually end up coming down these steps. And in front of you, there will be a sign. And that sign will say, this way to the Stranded Sailors. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to use your fire ability, which you'll obviously already have. And you'll use it to open up the urn. And this will open up the area. You can now follow this path all the way to the Stranded Sailors and unlock a new door there. However, instead of continuing down the path, we're gonna drop down the ladder and follow the path down here. You can already see the shrine in the background. What we need to do is we need to use our bomb ability to break into this cave. And once we get into here, there will be a new mini boss type enemy, which I actually found a little bit challenging. He got me pretty good a couple times and you will have to run back all the way back to him if you do die, so keep that in mind. But once you do defeat him, the ladder should drop, and as soon as the ladder drops, you'll be able to climb it and continue around the bend. Once you come outside, just follow the path, and you'll eventually get taken all the way to the shrine. We're approaching some of the final shrines of the game now. For this next one, we're spawning at the Stranded Sailor. I just showed you in the last clip how you would get to the Stranded Sailor area from the Lost Cemetery. If you do need help, just go back. But once you are here and you will need the bomb ability, you can climb up these stairs and this person should be here to talk to you. You may need to defeat the frog for them to show up. So keep that in mind just in case. You can blast past the door now and head up the three or four staircases. Eventually, you can go up this staircase to the right. You can axe your way through some of these ice crystals and then drop down. And then on the second drop down, make sure you melee in order to fall through the tunnel system. This is a really important step here as uh, you need to get underground. And now what we can do is follow the tunnels. There is quite a bit of ways to go through the tunnels. But as you emerge out of the other side of the tunnel, you will be at the shrine here. The final two shrines of the game do require you to have the hookshot upgrade. So as soon as you unlock the hookshot, you can go through the Grove of Spirits, which is the first door you ever unlocked in the game. This is the first kind of mini boss you fought. And you'll go through the door here and you'll end up at the Lost Cemetery, but you'll end up at the very beginning of it, which is kind of where we want to be. Once we're here, we can actually just use the hook shot just off to the left hand side of the screen here. Don't fall off the map like I did. But once you use the hook shot, you should now be able to go to this area that was previously inaccessible. If you just follow along the pretty obvious path, you'll end up at a pretty obvious shrine. Obviously interact with it, you are almost done. Last but not least, we are in the Stranded Sailor area with the Hookshot ability. I've shown you how to get here in a previous clip, so if you need advice on how to get to the Stranded Sailor, go back in the video a little bit. But you'll need to come across and Hookshot on these new platforms that were previously inaccessible. As soon as you get to these kind of four corners, a ton of these boomerang enemies will spawn. They seem like they're supposed to be hard, but I personally found them to be really, really easy. I think you have to defeat like five of them, and then you have to defeat one of those long range toxic cannoneers. You can even use the cannoneer shots to help you defeat the enemies that you were fighting. 
But once you're ready, you're just going to leave the area by hook shotting over towards them and then taking them out. And then you can just continue following the path using the ladder behind them, which was previously not dropped, but is now available. Now that we have the hook shot, we can also return to the overgrown ruins. There is a new area we can now access by heading down to the bottom left of the screen towards the elevator system that we kind of took down to get here. You can now hook shot across this gap, which you previously weren't able to. You can use your arrow to shoot at the little box to produce some platforms. And then you can hook shot into this boss battle area. I actually found this fight to be kind of difficult in my opinion. Maybe you'll have an easier time than me, but you can use the flower in the bottom of the screen in order to basically have it shoot at you, but it will miss often and shoot at all the enemies, which will make it a lot, lot easier. There's also a mini boss at the end, but you do have to defeat all of these enemies and then the vine will come down and allow you to move on. As soon as that happens, it's pretty simple. Just use the vine to get up and then follow the path towards your shrine. Watch out for the simple enemy there so they don't take you out and you are good to go. Next up is one of the trickiest ones in the game in Castle Lockstone. I do have the hookshot ability here. You will need it in order to actually beat this area completely, but go into the pit room, go up and to the left to enter this room. You will have cleared a bunch of stuff here already to get the hookshot, but climb up the main ladder, then continue up the stairs and go into the doorway on the left. Go past this room into the next area and here hook shot to the first platform. Then you can hook shot into the secret hole. And once inside here, you can find a secret lever. Make sure you push it. This will open something up for us, which we need. You can then hook shot back across the gaps and make your way through the gate that is now open and previously was not. And then here you will find your shrine. Congratulations. This is the last magic shrine, which means that you should now have a total of six ability points to spend at any given time. Last but not least, we'll need to go to the camp of the free crows. Don't worry, you will need to go here as a part of the story, but you will unlock a door, meet a new group of people. They'll give you a key so you can then move on, but I've already done that. So I'm going to now go past them and continue to the left of the screen. There is a sign there that will let you know that there is something important. But here we can use our hook shot to go across this gap and there will be a bunch of this kind of like ice area. We'll need to use our arrow and really good timing in order to get across all of these gaps. So we're just gonna be moving towards the kind of push plates and as we're moving towards them, we're gonna be timing our arrows so that we can make sure we get there on time. And this is just a little bit of practice and error, a little bit of trial and error, and uh, just taking your time to get through. There's no actual enemies here, but you can obviously fall off the map enough times to cause yourself enough damage, but luckily you'll respawn at the door and it's pretty simple. Feel free to also use your uh, main attack on any ice in order to regenerate your ability and then use the last one here, grab it. You have to go all the way around and you have to hook shot yourself forward so you have enough time to get across this last gap and that should be your last shrine. Hopefully that unlocks your achievement but also maxes out your health and ability points at six each. Thank you so much for watching the video. Drop a like if it was helpful. Special thanks everyone on Patreon for supporting the show and hopefully I see you soon. Peace.